Alright, this is going to be a quick start video for Rig Helper version 3. I'm not going to go over anything in too much depth, but I will explain what every function of the script does. So in order to load uh, Rig Helper, you're going to want to click this uh, script editor button down here, and then click source script, and then just navigate to wherever you save the script, and double click it. And that just loads all the code. Now in the mailbox, you're going to want to type Rig Helper, all one word with a capital H, like this, and that will load the GUI. So the first thing you'll notice is that you have some options before you start. You have your number of spine joints here, number of fingers, stretchy, and facial rig. Uh, the facial rig just sets up a joint-based facial rig. If you'd rather work with blend shapes, then leave this unchecked. Stretchy just sits up squash and stretch for the whole rig, and then these two controllers are fairly self-explanatory. So your first step is to click Make Skeleton Proxy. And what that does is it sets up some bones for you to place throughout your mesh. And they're all named so you should be able to tell where they go. And they're all kind of placed in the right spot. Some things to note are that the fingers directly inherit their orientation. So make sure that they are oriented correctly to your mesh. Finger 1 is always the thumb. And the thumb usually has an inward curl. So you're going to want to orient it properly. So when you rotate it, it curls inwards. So after you place all your joints, as well as these locators down here for the first foot, which are also named, you're going to want to click Make Controls to it. And this sets up all the control objects. And what you do at this step is to use component mode to shape these control objects however you want. So just make sure that you are only selecting these purple dots and not transforming or scaling the uh, transform node. So you want to be controlling these control vertices and not the control node, or the transform node. So after you shape all the controllers how you like them, you can go ahead and set up the rig. And that will do the rest of the rig setup for you. And now you have a fully functional rig. Furthermore, you can click lock and hide, and that will get rid of all the junk on your rig, and it will also get rid of all the junk attributes that you don't need. After that, you can move on to the skinning tab. And I have some tools here to help you. You can type in the name of your mesh here to use these tools. But the main thing you want to do in here is set up your bound skeleton. And what this does is it sets up a nice clean skeleton that you can easily export in case you want to use this character for a game rig. And you can also choose what kind of prefix you want. So maybe you want it to be B for bone. And you can also select the amount of twist runs that you want. So maybe you want one for the neck, three for the upper arm, three for the forearm, maybe one for the thigh, and none for the shin. That's fine. You can click make my scale, and that will just create a nice clean skeleton that you can use for a game engine. And it's right here in the joints group under the mover control. Just remember that when you're ready to export the skeleton, you're going to want to unparent it, or else it will be inside of some null groups and that will not work well in a game engine. One thing to note though is that you cannot unparent this if you change the global scale of your rig, because it will create a transform node on top of this reference joint, and that's not good either. But you shouldn't be scaling a game rig anyways, so you can lock this attribute if you want. But if you're working with film, just don't worry about it and keep this in the joints group. Okay. 
So after you have your skeleton set up, you can click this button to select my skeleton. And then you can go ahead and skin it using the smooth bind option. And I usually use selected joints to keep my uh, skinning nice and clean. But you can set the joint hierarchy if you want. And the rest of these options are up to you. Some other options that we have here are the paint skin weights option, which just uh, puts you in paint skin weights mode in case you want to keep your mesh referenced so you don't deselect it. And I also have a 3DS Max esque waiter, so you can select vertices and then load your influence in this box, all your influences. And then you can assign a particular weight to any influence that you want. It's very useful for blocking in your weights. You also have a mirror weights option, which is the same as going into the edit smooth skin drop down, but it's just a few less clicks. And there's also a smooth all weights button, which does exactly what it says. So the next section is the facial GUI. And this is where you will set up everything that has to do with the facial GUI. Just remember that if you set up your rig without a facial rig to begin with, you will not be able to access this section. So let's go ahead and set up a new scene. And set up a rig with a facial rig. So now you can see that our character has all the facial rig controls. So back to this box, we can make our GUI mover, and that just makes a little box that uh, all your facial controls will be set into. And click make iRig, and that will just set up a standard little iRig for you. And if you press up, that will give you the driver group and you can move that wherever you want and that will be the new zero location for your controller this standard blend shape GUI is a very automated system that will set up a full blend shape GUI for you all you have to do is select your mesh and then click the button and what it will do is set up a bunch of target shapes that you have to model and once you're done modeling them your facial GUI will work just fine. The next option here is prepare facial network and that is specifically for the joint paste facial rig which is this stuff right here and that just preps it so you can set up a custom GUI in this next section. So only do that if you want to set up custom sliders. One thing to note is that the joint based facial rig does not work well with the blend shape rig. So it's good to choose one or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and click prepare facial network here. And that just sets up a network of nodes that will allow us to connect these controllers to these types of sliders. So in this custom GUI tab, you have a bunch of options here. First off, you can make a custom slider. So let's make a 4x4 slider and call it Sync for our Sync controller. So that'll pop up right here in the facial GUI box and we can move it wherever we want. Okay, and now that we have it created, we can go ahead and prep it. So let's select this control slider in the middle, copy its name, and paste it in this box. And then click Prep Slider. And that sets up a network of nodes on the slider, so we can connect the controls to the slider. So let's say that when we move this controller down, we want it to open the jaw. So what we're going to do is select the bottom for the control type, and then select our jaw controller, and rotate it down. And with your jaw controller selected, you will click 
prep, I mean a joint CTR slider. Just make sure that the slider that you want is in this box. So once I click that, we can see that the slider controls that control. And the nice thing about the system is that you can use this slider and you still have the freedom to move this control wherever you want. And you can also set up multiple controls per one slider. So let's say that we want the right to be a smile shape. So what we can do is move some of these controls where we want them. Like that. And then to make lives easier, we can mirror these facial controls as well. And now we have a perfect mirror from left to right. And we're going to select all the controls that we want. I'm going to go ahead and hide the skeleton so I don't accidentally select it. Select all the controls you want. And then let's say we want the right control type. And then click joint CTR slider. Just make sure that the correct name is in this box. You can see here I actually type Q. So let's just get rid of that. Press it again and we're good to go. So now when you move to the right, it controls those shapes. You can connect these controls to as many sliders as you want. And you can have as many sliders as you want. So the only thing that you need to keep track of is that if you're doing a diagonal type slider, keep it diagonal. Only use these diagonal control types. And same thing with top and bottom. Only do top, left, bottom, right. You can also set up custom blend shape sliders. What you do for this is you type in the name of your blend shape node. And then it's similar to the joint system. So once you have your blend shape node in here, you select the orientation of the slider, and you just click blend shape slider, and that will set up the control. So you'll have your target shape selected, your blend shape node in this box, the control type selected, and then you'll click blend shape slider. So that is everything in the custom GUI tab. Again, it might be easier to watch me do it in my next video. There's also an animation tab here with some simple controls. Uh, you have mirror facial controls with some options here, right to left, or reset source. You have zeros, which just sets all the body controls to zero. And you can also mirror body controls from left to right. So that is Rick Helper. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or post on Creative Crash. And stay tuned for my next video.